Describe your father as a man with weakness and own feelings. If you could elaborate on that. I think the biggest weakness of my father was his love for his family. This was his biggest weakness. Surely, like every human being, he had pros and cons. As for weaknesses, I couldn't talk about any weakness if not what I already mentioned. The real love for his family until his very last day. What are some core principles he taught you as a man? As said before, the love for the family, the blood family, for the parents, for my mother, for my siblings, for my sisters, as well as respect, the fact of being a serious person and having morale. These were the principles he taught us. He always taught us how to be serious and respectful. You were homeschooled. What was the reason they told you? And what type of lessons did you learn about life? And what did she teach you, your, your mother teach you? Yes, I describe it in my book, which hopefully will be released soon in the US. My mother started classes at 9 a.m. We took stock of the situation, lessons were to be done, and we used small tables as desks. Everyone had his or ideas, somebody didn't want to do his or own work. It was a different way of schooling, but at the same time this was a domestic educational way of schooling to teach me basic education. After the arrest of my father, I attended public schools and graduated there. However, my mother provided me with elementary and middle school education. You mentioned your father never missed dinner with your family. What type of conversations were had at the dinner table with your family? A bit of everything, as in every family. For example, my sister Lucia, the youngest one, maybe told my father that my brother and I disturbed during the lessons or that we did something wrong. My mother could have reported that I or Gianni, my brother, were distracted during lessons or that we didn't study. Then ordinary things, like everyday problems of normal life, what was to be done during the following day or the week. Nothing different from a normal family, ordinary conversations had at dinner. Probably this does not happen anymore today, since nobody is having dinner together with their parents. Nowadays, families are a little split up and the union that characterized the past is no more there, like the idea of reuniting all for lunch or dinner. Most of all for dinner, since at lunch this could be more difficult for people going, for example, to school. The table was the meeting point of a family. Dinner was both the summary of that day and the following one, deciding to do or not to do certain things. I am not married, but I am in a relationship. I do understand and see that many times in all modern families this, unfortunately, does not exist anymore. The table has always represented a link for many family things. When you frequently moved, as your father and family evaded authorities, what did he tell you about the reason? <laughs> As I said before, no explanation had to be given to us. It was said that we had to leave, we had to pack our bags. When we saw my mother taking the bags from under the bed, we knew we had to leave soon. And so we did. Not much explanation was given, since there was no need, as said before. Maybe it is because we were born in an emergency situation, if we may call it so. To us kids, breaking our routine was the only fun. As children, there was no better thing than changing the situation and context. This was fun for us.